Hey guys, we're here at SHOT Show and I'm going to pretend like I own his YouTube channel and you're here at StraightEdgeKnives.com. That's what you're calling it, right? No, it's Straight Edge Knives on YouTube. Okay. And Instagram. Here's your you mic. Get, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're so professional. <laughs> <laughs> Always having a good time though, man. That's right. If you're not having a good time, then, you know, why go anywhere? <laughs> yeah, we're doing this for nothing if we're not having a yeah. good time. So, we got some new stuff here. Would you like to check it out? Yes, I would. I think no. everybody would like to see the new stuff. We have a friction folder this year. This is from Nemanja Bogdanov, who's come down to the jungle quite a few times with me. Um, he's an amazing, incredible Serbian designer. We actually have two um, amazing, credi um, incredible Serbian designers uh, working with us now. But it's our first time doing a friction folder, um, which is right up our alley because yeah. you don't have to have, like, best car uh, liner locks for for friction folders, you know, and and it's uh, a little bit more simple design, and, and um, they did it right. And this is really beautiful because it's I um, believe this one is in 14C 28N, but also it's super super duper durable. And I'm not going to tell you the testing that we've done with it, but um, that could have been a YouTube video itself. <laughs> You guys are better. Look at this. I really like the wood. Yeah, the the wood on it. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know that's um, all of the wood. All of the wood from um, El Salvador is shipped from the United States. So literally, they they bring the um, uh, respectably sourced wood all the way to El Salvador, slap some steel on it, and then yeah, and then and then send it back, and then and and this sell is, it. This is actually cool because it's not just wood. I mean, there's there's still yeah yeah there, there's still liners. Wood on stuff top too. of steel liners. You have huh? Four, you know, four right? screws in there holding it all together. Like, I didn't think about that. Normally, friction folders don't have like a steel liner mm, or something. No. Too. That even makes it even more durable. Yeah, you got good job, Nemanja. The, you got reinforcement here with the with the screws going through mm -hmm. the back pins. Absolutely. So, yeah, this thing is gonna. This is, yeah, this, for all intents and purposes, should hold up really, really well. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I know it holds up, but I'm not telling you guys uh, what we've done for testing because now all the um, YouTube guys use that as, like, their their standard. And you shouldn't throw knives at brick walls for, well, you should for fun. It's, it's kind of <laughs> fun. Um, but it's not the way to test the knife the best way. <laughs> no, this is, that's really good. I mean, at first glance, I... You know, you wouldn't think that, but yeah, you really start looking at this, and there, there's a lot more to it's this beefy. knife than, than what it, yeah. than what you would think. That's, Blind Shepherd. That's what's yeah, yeah. He's um, Nemanja Bogdanov is um, Strike Gently Company's primary pin designer, um, and he designs you know pins like like oh, okay. I could probably have five on my on my thing now from him. And um, I told Nemanja. Dude, you have a very good artistic eye. Have you ever thought about your love of knives and your artistic eye and putting them together? And he's like, Joe, I understand what you are saying. So um, he started designing knives, and he's done a really cool job doing that. Oh, awesome. Um, and he puts, like, a, a much more artistic um, uh, change to knives than some, some of us knife designer guys are capable of, and I really appreciate that. He's awesome, awesome dude. Yeah, this is this is the, you know, friction folders is something I would normally look at. Yeah, yeah, and just go uh, but, and then and then all of a sudden you oh, yeah, listen to you talk about like, it Ooh. and then actually looking at it and and seeing how well built this thing is, I I'm like I would totally throw this like in my coin pocket. Yeah, you know, you know yeah. that little fifth coin pocket or yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. That, that that's like the only thing that you can put in there is like yeah. a watch or a, a small knife. I mean, even the why uh, textile manufacturers? Yeah, what the heck is that small little pocket for on jeans? Honestly, because nobody carries stopwatches or, uh, or pocket watches. Pocket watches nah, anymore. Not, not very many people. But, <laughs> I mean, this thing is. I mean, the blade centered on this. I mean, it's yeah, it's, yeah. This would be a really cool like little, and, or especially EDC, if you live yeah. in an area where you know everywhere but the U.S. with all you yeah, know their rules the and stuff. Yeah. Too, you know, Canada. All, all, well, I, I don't know about any other countries' knife laws, but um, yeah. I know friction folders are. Pretty awesome to use in in England and in um, uh, a couple of different other countries. That so if you were traveling to. overseas, you'd practice your bag. Yeah, you, you'd, yeah, you it's might not so illegal. You might yeah. definitely check your. Uh, we but, are not uh, a legal uh, entity, legal, yeah. guys. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome, though. Speaking of um, some amazing Serbian designers, um, one of my best friends, Goran Mikalovic, 
um, who lives in the Amazon jungle. It sounds like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but also lives in the treehouse. Um, designed this knife, the combo knife, which is a really, really cool bushcraft EDC fixed blade. You know, you, you guys can see with my hands, it's it's smaller, like sub three inch, um, sub three inch blade, and uh, it's kind of incredible. Some dude's flying a drone over there. Yeah, I just I heard it. <laughs> I I didn't think we were allowed to have drones at Shot Show. There was like a very specific rule about that. That's cool. Um, I <laughs> so, guess, it, guess it's a product. I don't know, but um, so he he made this very very compact combo thing, and combo. Um, is his name at least the the combo that i know of a translation is from a ceremony that that we do with the indigenous down there with um phyla medusa bicolor which is this crazy cute green frog is about this big and and they get the poison out of them and then they burn you and then they um put the poison on you and you get really sick there's absolutely no beneficial reason to do this but to mess your body up and then um they take water Wow. They put it on the bird, and then you're good, and you you feel holistically like amazing, like you just flushed everything out, and it makes you a better hunter. So did you do this? <laughs> oh yeah, you did it. Oh gosh, yeah, I got burns all over me. Every you guys time. don't know this guy bushcraft. Uh, we need to make Craig do it. <laughs> yeah, he has a whole thing where you guys go down South America. Yeah, and, yeah, that's awesome. We, we can talk about that towards the end. Of course, yeah. So if you guys want to go get messed up by frogs in the Amazon jungle, I know a guy. Um, but that's where the combo ceremony um, is 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 from. So it's uh, very very interesting. But um, now they're not like molesting these frogs so bad. They figured out a way to get the poison out without hurting them so much, and that's pretty cool too. Rant. Yeah, yeah and, and obviously Gorn, he lives down there. All yeah, the time. yeah. Like yeah, he lives the bushcraft life. So yeah. if he designed this, he designed it to work. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. It's gonna you know, do... he wakes up in the morning and he's not checking Instagram. He's fixing yeah. the thatching on his roof. Yeah, and stuff Probably too. Barely have Wi-Fi down there, huh? <laughs> Actually, no. They just got four G. Oh, oh, yeah. Awesome, right? Um, so like in in Central and South America, there's a really um, and I'll summarize this up. I promise I won't talk too much about it, but. Uh, they were guys who kind of like uh, figured out the way to do um, portable um, 3G antennas, you know, and they were the ones who taught the Americans how to do that too. So like when you go over to like a big uh, metal concert or something and you got good reception, it's because they're using the same um, portable antennas that they they have in uh, Brazil and in, in, Peru, in Colombia too. Yeah, <laughs> fun fact. <laughs> fun fact. Yeah, we're always learning something new about over here, at Chacho. Yeah, yeah, but I swear to God, the internet here is like five times worse than the uh, Amazon yeah. jungle. I, I had to deal with it this morning, and it was a pain in the butt. I, I promise I won't complain that much about it, but oh my God! I know it's hard. <laughs> when I make these videos, I want to upload them as fast as possible for you guys, and it's hard. Good, right? good, good luck in Vegas. <laughs> 30 uh, well, last night it took me three hours to upload a video it's it's no fun yeah. it's not fun um so i got some new designs too we have the bush scott um designed after the uh, scottish highlander scan um which has a very very uh um well-known history throughout the uh, scottish heritage and i wanted to see that mixed with the bushcraft knife so that's where the bush scott came from you know the the scan is a very very um um important traditional knife if you're if you're wearing a kilt and and um you're you're a highlander so i wanted to see that version but bushcraft style and, that, and that's where the bush got came from so this is like a bushcraft boot knife um and and i actually put one in my boot yesterday and walked around like a like like when i was a kid in the 90s with a with a knife in my boot and it was it was unbelievably comfortable um so i, I was pretty happy with it but it comes with a full welted leather sheath um we have laser etching down the side and it's made out of 14 c 28 n um, which is a great stainless steel very durable um, based on our testing at least and also has a pronounced pommel on the back for you know smashing uh, tent sticks and stuff oh you know you got that crazy squirrel that comes after you, you got to oh, his attitude you, you, you can know. shank a squirrel in like oh, five seconds with that though. yeah yeah i haven't met any vegas squirrels yet that that are doing that but um I'm ready, just in case they start going nuts. Yeah. Actually, the, that was a dad okay. joke. Before you <laughs> got here to the booth, I was looking at the knives, and that that one caught my eye pretty quick. Too. Yeah, it, um, it's you know, I I um 
got this book. God forbid, I cannot remember the name of um, his, uh, uh, the author of this book, but um, my friend Corvus, um, Corvus Survival, uh, um, him and I were talking at Blade Show about Scan News a lot, and he showed me this book of this gentleman, um, who I can't remember the name of, who did a whole book on Scan News, and it was amazing learning about how these Scottish dirks and all these um, different sub compact sub compact compact um, uh, knives are used, and uh, it was invigorating. Yeah, I mean, you can't find that stuff on the internet too. You have to like look through these weird things called books to learn from it. It's super Yeah, neat. this thing is really cool. I like it. Uh, I mean, the, the detail on the laser engraving is really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. You guys can see that. That, re that really sets it apart. We're doing uh, on the quite back. a bit better with our lasering. Like, everything with Condor, they're yeah. always improving, but now they've got, like, big boy lasers and stuff, too. I can't wait to go down to the factory and figure out so, how to mess it up. See, I, I, <laughs> I have XL hands, right? And I got a full grip on this. This is... this. As small Which as it is looks. interesting because you have that's like a three inch or three and a half inch handle, and it's yeah, hard to it, make people make it feel good. It feels like a four inch handle, though. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, well, like, that that's skin dudes. That's that's not me designing. That's just the the Scottish heritage of, of this knife and, and why they're so ambidextrous and 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 usable. Honestly, and you got these little um, slotted points here for so you know, pinch grip. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh yeah, grip. yeah. That way you can. You know, do 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 all the fine work in the chest lever grip. I don't know why Ray Mears calls it a chest lever grip when you're cutting stuff. I would call it a, a chest lever cut, but that's just me. So pretty much almost a ninety degree spine too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, this is a prototype too. We have oh, okay. we have a couple of um, um, things we're going to change. There's a ninety degree spot right here and and right here. And, and if you're making or designing a knife, sometimes that can be a stressor. Especially if you're like a, a batoning, bushcrafting type person. So we're going to round that out. And the spine's getting sharper. Um, okay. The only reason it doesn't feel as sharp as it could be, right? Well, I mean, this is all right, but um, there's varnish all, all over this. Even though it's the same steel life, they, um, knife, they want to make sure shipping from El Salvador to the US, they don't have any um, oxidation problems. So yeah. that's it. But. Um, not this one. Mine that's back at the uh, uh, hotel room. Um, I personally lit like seven fires, but so far, not this morning, but um, I wouldn't uh, be surprised last if week. it was this morning. No, no, no. no. <laughs> the, this morning I was yelling at our Las Vegas internet problem. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that, that's very interesting. This is called the Bush Scott. Um, another new knife, new, new machete that we have is the Rude Boy. This was um, really interesting, Mr. Fleming, because... Um, I was asked to redesign a, the Latin American machete, and that's kind of a daunting task. I mean, this is a ubiquitous, you know, knife that's been around since like the 1800s, and, and I didn't know how to do it in, in, until I really looked at it. I was like, okay, maybe we can change the grind line to make this a little bit sexier on camera, but usable. That's that's important too, and also. First time, if, if you look in the Condor catalogs, as much of a machete company as we are, we barely have any designs with that little flange on the back. Oh, okay. And that's something like from Ontario, from the Collins, from the U.S. manufacturers, and, and from World War II, you know, back in the day. You always see uh, these engineer machetes with that little um, flange on the back, and we have the mold. We just didn't, you know, use it in the Condor line. We've used it in the um, Central and South American line forever. And so that was um, kind of the idea behind this. Uh, new version of a Latin American machete that just looks a little bit different. Not better or worse, just looks different, just but still gives, usable. Gives a little different look. Yeah. In, in a modern the, this, take on a classic design, yeah, if you will. Yeah, that's, and that's kind of something, if you're ever designing, um, that I think people should challenge themselves more with because... There are so many ways to skin a cat. That's a, that's a that's a dad knife joke now. Yeah. Um, but there there are so many ways to um, uh, express yourself in a design where you don't have to listen to these exact rules to make this a, a bushcraft knife. Internet. As much as Morris Kahansky is absolutely right about it, a four inch knife with the four inch blade. Sometimes you can break that rule and still make a really cool bushcraft knife and make a. A three-inch knife or a, or a, a eighteen-inch knife, you know that that you're able to do that. So, designers and, and and knife makers out there on the internet, 
figure out a different way to reinvent the wheel and i think you'll have some fun with it have too. Some fun. yeah for sure what's your favorite design you've seen here so far at chat show not not condor rides just everything all together Every, what's the everything. coolest knife this is a big question what's the coolest knife you've seen so far um and think about that hard that's a, that's a big that's decision a, a shot that's show a when you're when you're like inundated with all of this really cool yeah, new yeah, metal yeah, equipment and stuff there's yeah. stuff no like between some of the you know the booths that i've been to so far mm -hmm. tops has had a couple of really cool prototypes on the table yeah um, yeah yeah that, absolutely that Medusa, that, that first yeah be something that did would you see at, their frog market the mini i'm sorry market. boss i'm gonna talk about other companies right now don't fire me um but did you see that mini frog market special I, I oh that. that's the coolest knife yeah, i've seen so I far wanna. I really want it, man. Well, you know, come, and then coming over here to Collins, bring back Condor, though. But yeah, like, yeah, this I really dig. I love. I oh. <laughs> really like. I not. That's nice. I, not, I wasn't trying to set no, you up no, for that pitch. Yeah, but not falling <laughs> smoke up up your butt. But I really like this. I think it's. I mean, this is something I would buy, I would buy and carry. And that's then, cool. And then the I, I appreciate the that survival university designs. Yeah, did awesome. you see his gunting? Gunting is awesome. Yeah, that that's a uh, sexy actually blade. like all three. I would I would buy all three of those. Yeah, well. yeah. And then, I, uh, I, I just want the gunting because it's a big big at big big blade that you can use for you're a, you're stuff. a huge machete type. Yeah, thing. It's that's, something that's weird about that. A, so that's a good question for you. Yeah. Would you consider that gunting a machete? Well, um, that's you know what the answer to that is. The knife doesn't know what it's being called. So as much as we say gununting and, and machete in those words, there is a real word in each country's tradition where they actually have the right answer for that. So um, you go to the Philippines and it's probably a different word than gununting and we've Americanized the word gununting. So it's sometimes it's lost in translation. And, and that's, that's the same deal with... Um, well, gosh, a anything from a dirk all the way to uh, 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 a fencing blade where they have a specific name for it. But in the long run, it is a cutting tool made out of metal. So trying to figure out the um, tradition and the, the idea of where the origin comes from sometimes gets lost in translation. Oh, okay. And, and so calling it, let me circle back, uh, calling it a gununting versus a machete just depends on if it's a martial arts or outdoor aspect, but long story short, you go over there to, which I have never been to the Philippines um, yet. Um, but you, you ask them, they're just like, it's my Monday. It's, it's what I have on with me right now. And, and we might understand the, the word is a gununting, but it's their blade that they, that they pick up before they look at Instagram on their phone and they wake up in the morning, you know, it's, yeah. it's what they, uh, what they work with. So um, to answer that question, it just depends on the the a the person who designed it and also the the tradition that's based on that blade no matter where you're from oh, yeah. i mean this could be like gosh please don't kill me internet but buoy and and what actually is a buoy versus what's not a buoy was like a big big connotation like five years not connotation that's not the right word big uh, uh conflict like five years yeah. ago like and these are all the new buoy guys from Texas going, actually, it was this, that, and the other. And, and long story short, it's, it's a clip point knife that people like carry that has a tradition with the name behind it. So calling it a machete versus a, a knife is um, it's, 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 a, it's a hard thing to figure out because no matter what, they both cut stuff. Yeah. No, and, yeah, and, yeah and that's, yeah. yeah. Or you can even say at the end of the day is, well, it depends on what the designer is. Yeah. The designer's yeah. intended use. If, if you want like a, a straight down the line answer, martial arts versus um, outdoors. But that's so, Broad. that's, yeah, it's it's right, but it's so wrong too because you can use the, the uh, same ideas, you know, and still cut stuff with an awesome kukri, you know, designed to do stuff in World War II all the way to a very thin, sword looking machete style so yeah. that's the whole thing you know machetes um from my understanding and from what i've read you know machetes were swords that indigenous in south and central america would steal and and buy off of the naval um uh guys in the early 1800s and and figure out a way to steal all these cutlasses these naval cutlasses and they were like this is way better than a stick for going through the bush and then <laughs> This weapon, um, long story short, became into um, 
machete, what we know today as machetes. Uh, a farm style yeah. tool. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And most used, most used bladed object in the world uh, is a mach to me is a machete, yeah. um, and 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 we don't understand that so much as Americans because we have John Deere's and stuff where we can afford to do you know agriculture on a big scale. But everywhere else where they can't afford a John Deere, they're wow. using machetes. machetes. Yeah, and it's it's. It sucks being shown how to use a machete by a five-year-old, but they're way better at it than I am. Enough, yeah. <laughs> well, so, where do we find out more information yes. about your stuff? About your stuff? Oh, well, mine, condortoolknife.com. If you guys want to go get bit in the Amazon jungle, um, uh, bushcraftglobal.com, condortoolknife.com. And also... Well, if you're looking for more of Straight Edge Knives, Straight Edge Knives here on YouTube. You guys better smash that like button or subscribe button. Subscribe. Subscribe then, uh, button, yeah. I'm also on Instagram. At, you can at, like at, them, at, too. That's Straight Edge Knives. <laughs> so you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on YouTube. Uh, that's where I'm at. So This is SHOT Show 2024. In about five years, circle back to his yeah. thing because he's going to be really drained interviewing people after <laughs> yeah. after doing a bunch of these. <laughs> it's only day two and I'm already drained. Yeah, so. dude, it feels like Thursday already. <laughs> yeah. so, all right, Jeff, thanks again, Thank man. you. Thank Appreciate you. So thanks funny. for the history yeah. lesson. I'll look on the Absolutely. Well. Yeah. And um, I can recommend some books later on if you want to message me or something where I've learned this information from. Not pulling it out of um, my rear end. Doing research really helps you. Understand yeah, blades. Oh, smart. I know you're a machete expert. You have yeah. like and a huge nerd of them in your house and a basket. That's all that picture. <laughs> Wife, we do not have five thousand machetes at my house. There, I said it. Don't, don't tell her. But it's <laughs> on the internet, so it's true now. So, all, right, so, all right, everybody. Thanks for staying tuned. Thanks, guys. Uh, have a great day. Stay safe. Stay sharp, and we'll see you next time. I like that. Stay 